Hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking about your bone health. What is bone health? Why does it matter? Why should you care? Why does breast cancer and bone health, why do they come together? And what can you do to take the best care of your bones? Bone health refers to the density of your bones. How strong are your bones? I think you've probably heard about osteoporosis, where people have thinning of their bones and they might have, for example, a hunched posture. That's because they've broken the bones in the back. Just tiny little compression fractures. This is not a bone fracture like when you fall from a tree or like me when I fell off my roller skates. Not that kind of bone problem. These are tiny little weakening of the bone. So you should care about your bones because you're gonna live a long time, right? And we want to make sure we stay healthy, not just for our appearance, but we know that things like breaking a wrist, if you fall with minimal trauma, not from a roller skate, but for example, leaning on something, that these are really upsetting events in your life. The big one we think about are hip fractures. And we know a hip fracture really sets people back. So whether one has had breast cancer or not, we should care about our bones. A lot of us think about bone health in women. Actually, men are also at risk for loss of bone mineral density as well. So this applies to you and uh, other people in your life. Breast cancer and bone health are connected for a couple reasons. One, the treatments that we think about target the estrogen production in our bodies. So if your tumor is estrogen receptor positive, we will use therapy that blocks the estrogen receptor. To learn more about this, see our other videos about estrogen receptors and treatments for estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. When we lower estrogen in your body with the use of aromatase inhibitors, this decreases estrogen to the breast cancer, that's a good thing, but also to your bones, that's not so good. Actually, estrogen is really good for making our bones strong. And it's only after we stop making estrogen in our body from ovaries, if we have ovaries, that we see decreases in bone mineral density. So if I decrease estrogen in your body, I'm going to decrease estrogen getting to your bones. And that can over time, not right away, but over time lead to thinning of the bones, which can make them vulnerable to these little tiny breaks, like the compression fractures in your back. The other reason that we talk about bone health and breast cancer is because if you get to chemotherapy, and at the time you get chemotherapy, your ovaries are still working, it's very possible that we will make your ovaries not work, either short-term or long-term and ovaries make estrogen. When we decrease estrogen production, there we are, back to the bones again. So some of our treatments can cause bone loss because of lowered estrogen. And the other thing is that we don't recommend things that can strengthen the bone. So although we don't recommend hormone replacement therapy anymore, we, we really need to avoid it after breast cancer. It's really a, a non-starter, it's a no-go. So a lot of things involved in there, and also chemotherapy itself may cause thinning of the bone. Now the other key thing to know is that when we go through something very stressful in our lives, we may not be as active. So we know, for example, people who are in bed rest for a long time start losing bone density. And if we don't stay active, and a lot of us decrease our activity over time, our bones can be more vulnerable. So that's a lot, right? Breast cancer treatments, lower estrogen, chemotherapy can cause thinning of the bone. We don't want you on hormone replacement therapy after breast cancer. And we shut down estrogen with the medications we give in many cases. So what's the good news? I always wanna give you good news. The good news is that when you stop those treatments that thin the bone, like aromatase inhibitors, bone density actually comes back up to normal where it was before you started treatment with a little decrease because bone density decreases over time. So if you're on an aromatase inhibitor and your bone mineral density comes down, when you're finished with your course of an aromatase inhibitor, your bone density will go back again. So that's good. On the other hand, over time, our bones start to thin anyway. 
So it's really important to ask about your bones, ask what can you do to strengthen them. That's what I'm going to turn to next. So if your bones are healthy as far as you know, and you're under 65, even if you're on an aromatase inhibitor, it's very likely you actually won't need medications to keep your bones healthy. So let's talk about some things you can do short of medications. One really good thing is if you're smoking, to quit smoking. Smoking for some reason is just very bad for the bones. It's also very bad for your jaw and your teeth. So there are lots of other reasons to quit, but this can really help your bones. If you're a smoker and you need help quitting, you can ask your doctor for a referral to a quit line. These are available all over the country. If they're not in your particular clinic or practice, there are national hotlines available to you. Your doctor may also have special interests in helping you quit. You don't have to do this alone. The other thing you want to do is be moderate in use of alcohol. Alcohol is also known to make our bones thinner, and one would never want to say if this is a source of pleasure for you that you can't have it, but we do think that there's a relationship between more alcohol use than a typical, you know, half a glass or glass of wine a day, breast cancer recurrence, and even your bones. So other reasons to think about limiting your alcohol intake. If you need help with this, this is something that we as your doctors who care about you will not think differently of you, will be so uh, glad that you felt open enough to talk with us about this. The other thing you can do is weight-bearing exercise. Now we used to think walking was enough. We thought if we walked, that was good uh, pressure on our bones. Bones heal under pressure, like when somebody gets a fracture. The reason we put them in a cast is to keep that bone pressing against each other. It's the same with the other kind of bone in our back. So we want to have some weight on the bone to help them get stronger. So if walking is not good enough, what else can you do? Well, running or fast walking, running um, will put more pounds per square inch on your bones, if you will. And if you walk, you can actually get a weighted vest or you can carry light hand weights. Now you'll want to talk with your doctor, is that okay for you if you've recently had surgery on that side? Make sure you're exercising under supervision or if you've seen a physical therapist, ask them. I mentioned you can get a weighted vest. You can um, do small hand weights, just stationary. You can do push-ups against the wall. You don't have to do you know, football player or karate uh, athlete, athletic push-ups. You can just do push-up against the wall. And you can also get elastic bands. All of those will come with instructions on how to use them. So those are things you can do. Quit smoking or decrease your smoking as much as possible. Keep alcohol to a minimum or moderate amount. Exercise, especially with weight bearing. And then there are two other things that we think may help. One is taking vitamin D supplements and the other is taking calcium supplements. This is actually a little bit controversial, but we know in many parts of the world that we don't get enough vitamin D. We actually, as children, make vitamin D through our skin. So if you're out walking with a five-year-old, for 10 minutes in the sun and you're in your 40s, the five-year-old makes so much more vitamin D through their skin than you do. As we get older, our skin is just less efficient. Natural sources of vitamin D are oily fish like salmon and tuna, swordfish. A lot of people don't eat enough fish or you don't like fish or there are other reasons for you not to have fish. So vitamin D supplements are really reasonable to take. We recommend about 1,200 units a day. Now, um, orange juice and milk are supplemented. A lot of foods are supplemented with vitamin D, but you can also take a vitamin D supplement that you can get over the counter. We don't normally check vitamin D levels. We just assume that most of us are vitamin D deficient, believe it or not, or insufficient. If not deficient, we're on the low side. Now, calcium is another thing that a lot of us don't get a lot of because we don't have a lot of dairy products, and there are reasons not to have dairy, right? It's not necessarily good for us to have a lot of dairy products. Calcium in food also comes from green vegetables like spinach, uh, the problem is it's not as available to our bodies. So if you're concerned about your bone health, taking calcium supplements 
once or twice a day is a good idea, and there are varying amounts that we'll put up here on the screen. I've covered a lot. I've covered why we care about your bones, why we care if you have a diagnosis of breast cancer. We talk about ways that you can, without any supplements, make your bones as strong as possible or decrease the rate at which we lose bone, which we all do over time. We also talked about lifestyle things that you can add on to your routine, like weight-bearing exercise, calcium and vitamin D supplements. Talk with your doctor about supplements. These are just general rules of thumb. I hope this has been helpful. If it has, if you click subscribe, other people will find the videos and you can also click like, which will help other folks find it too.